All right, so this video is going to be talking about how to do classes in C++. So classes are a little more complicated than they are with Java. In particular, each class that you're going to create needs two different files. So this one here is called a header file, and I've titled it room.h with uh, that as the extension. And then the corresponding file that goes with it is called the cpp, room.cpp. And so what you put in these classes are the templates over here, kind of like the function prototypes. And then you put the actual implementation in this guy over here. So for example, in this class, which I've titled room, which may be appropriate to Zool very soon, I have in the public area, this is the constructor. So room with uh, arguments if you want to. Notice I don't have to put the names of the parameter variables themselves, like I do here. So this is the corresponding constructor. I don't need new description over here, though I can put that in. That is optional. This is a string pointer. Um, I'll get into why it's a pointer and not a regular string in a minute. And an int, which is, this is a method which returns the ID. Private, all of the variables, so for example, this is a method that gets the description. The actual variables themselves end up going in the private area. The reason you do this is so that people that are using your code from the outside world, for example, if they had a copy of your files, they wouldn't be able to alter the description directly or get the description directly. They would have to go through your methods. And you would want to do that because if they are trying to set the ID to something that's just not valid, like if your IDs are supposed to be all positive and they try and set it to a negative number, you could have a method that says, is the set ID, which checks for that kind of thing. It basically cleans up the input. So this would be really important for any kind of application that has security so that they don't actually put in things that they're not supposed to be able to put in. So over here is the CPP where we've actually implemented it. So notice up here I have this include room.h in quotes, which is referring to this file. They're in the same place. What ends up happening is, is that this definition of the class goes up here at the top. My main file is down here, which also is including room.h. So that allows me to use rooms in my main file down here. So this, I've just named this file.cpp, but it's got my main method in it. And I can use rooms now in my main method. You can have classes that refer to each other using headers, and that's where we'll get into header guards. If you want to know what that is, you should go look up what header guards are. It's kind of an if statement that surrounds the whole .h file. Other things to note about this uh, room here. So this room, notice I have room colon colon before each of these different methods. That's important so that um, these, the get description applies only to a particular room. It's got the return type and then what I'm actually doing inside of here. If I look down at my main method down here, what's going on here? So I'm trying to point out the difference between vectors and arrays in this section. So if I look down here, I have a set of room pointers and I've named that list and there it's a, got two things in it or it's got space for two things. I highly recommend that if you're going to be using classes that you use pointers to those classes whenever you're storing them. So notice here it's a room pointer as opposed to an actual room. And that has to do with when you want to change what the room has inside of it, it's much easier to change pointers than it is to change actual objects. The same thing is true here, the vector of room pointers. Those of you from Java, pointers are basically what Java does for all of its objects. So whereas in Java we would have a room current room. In C++, that is the equivalent of a room pointer because it's actually referring to a section of memory in Java. And in C++, it's the same idea. It's saying, at this address in memory is where my object is located. All right, so taking a look down here, my array of room pointers is happening here. If you have a room pointer, which is what list zero would be, you can use the new keyword, just like you do in Java. This sets aside, this basically calls a constructor and sets aside space for it. So this new room is calling this room constructor right here. I'm passing in a string, which is this new description. And because I'm using new, it's a pointer to that thing. So that's why I had to have a string pointer here. And I can set pointers uh, to each other. The reason I'm using a string pointer right here is that if I tried to set aside a certain number of characters 
and then the new description had more characters than that, it would actually just overrun the memory into whatever was next. So that's why I would rather create new space for this particular string and assign it here. So after that, I'm going to run this method, print array strings, which has a list and the size. And this is a double pointer to a room, which is absolutely allowed. Don't let your head explode on that one. Um, I'll get to the details of that in a second. Vectors, you push things to the back. So I'm pushing this room, I'm pushing this room, and then I'm going to print out all those things. So what are these things down here? So an array of pointers, you have to actually use a double pointer, which is actually what an array is doing under the hood. Whenever you see these things with two brackets, so if I say bracket 0, what list is doing is it's going to the first address in memory and dereferencing it. So it's secretly just a pointer in memory. And this is going to the zero thing and grabbing whatever is there, which is called dereferencing. It'd be the star. Um, so the brackets, these brackets here, is equivalent to a star zero into that section of memory. Whereas this would be, you go one section into the memory and dereference the thing there. That's actually what arrays are doing. One thing that you have to do with methods is you, if you're using an array, you also have to pass in how many things are in it. That information doesn't come with a pointer. So that's why I have size down here as well. So let's say that I want to walk through that array and get all the things out of it. So I would go up to the size of whatever this parameter is I pass in. So I would say C out. So I want to get the ith thing out of new list. New list, bracket i. This is the answer down here. So that is now a room pointer. What if I want to get its description? Well, I have to dereference that thing. This is that problem of using the star versus the, the star and a dot versus an arrow. Um, since this is a room pointer, I need to use the arrow to get its description. Now the problem with that is, get description is a string pointer. So if I run this, save that. So by the way, you have to either individually list all the CPP files to compile it. So I could do file.cpp and room.cpp. That's allowed. Or alternately, I can do star.cpp, which basically means there's a wildcard. Anything that has a CPP, compile that. You don't include the H files. So now if I run this, I print out the address and memory. That's what these two things are. So I actually need to dereference this again. So by order of operations, it does the arrow first, gets its description, and then does the star last. Now I'm actually getting the descriptions out. All right, so how do you use vectors then? They're just like array lists, right? No. So I'm passing in the vector here, vector of room pointers. I have to use something called an iterator. That's what this thing here is. An iterator walks through the memory that the vector is using in a particular order, but it's not necessarily using the indices. So I can't just use a for loop and say, give me the zero, the one thing, the two thing, because it's doing potentially bigger jumps than just one index at a time. So with an iterator, you actually have it point to the beginning, you add to the iterator, and then say, well, it's not the end. And this is actually a pointer into memory. IT is pointing at each of those things in order. So when I see out this guy, I actually have to dereference the iterator to get to the room pointer. Since it's still a pointer, I have to use the arrow to use the get description. And then if I just end line this, that gets me the address in memory. So I still have to dereference the string that get description is handing me back. Does that work? Of course it works. All right, so you can use vectors, and they do grow in size, but you have to use iterators to walk through it. The other warning I'll give you is that inside of here, if you erase something, so if I say new vect dot, 
erase it, you better end your for loop because that's going to mess up the iterator for all of everything after that. All right, so those are the things you'll need to know for Zool is how to deal with classes. I want to go over pointers, double pointers, and vectors.